And uh, first order business is the agenda Second. approval. So. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. okay. Any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, good. Uh, sec third item is approval of the minutes. Um, I wasn't here. I did have a question for those of you that were at the October meeting um, about the letter to the auditor. It says the explanation of the quick ratio um, and the letter was sent. And I think, Daniel, you sent some information about it, if I remember right. Yeah, that was sent to the OCC. Okay. Well, it, let me, can I make a comment? <clears throat> the letter did not address directly the conversation that we had, Tony, if you'll correct me if I'm wrong, about the issue with the sewer and water being $100,000 short on cash. Oh, no, no that, was, that was a separate, she explained that in the uh, that, that's the problem I have with her. She doesn't yeah. put the who into the they and the what into the it. Well, the, 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 the reason for the letter, wait, wait a minute, listen to me. I want okay. you to listen to me to correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. The reason for the, 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 the conversation was sewer and water was missing $100,000. That was the conversation that I asked the question about. <clears throat> Do you remember that conversation? It I remember it, it crystal got, clear. It got, it wasn't missing, it got spent or used up. But you didn't know how it got used up. No, it, it, she explained that in the Board of Commissioners meeting. It got used up through using inventory that had been built up from previous years and buying more inventory to replenish that. But what? It was pumps. It was, it was a list of things. Was it was it part of the original original budget from years before, or was this just something we decided to do at that this last past it, year? It what a, did we spend it on? It was a result of all the supply chain delays. Like we, we had to eat up our reserves, like reserved inventory, and when we made into that, we had to replenish it. But everything was <coughs> a year. What is time. it? What is it? If I'm everything. In, like. Anything we need to run the sewer system. Okay, so what was the letter for? I guess that's the second issue. The letter was a indicator from the ODC that we got in for. ODC. And what ODC? LGC. Okay, uh, for people who have to listen to this, or the acronyms and this and the sloganology soup. I've listened to the several of these on, online for the past few meetings. It's tremendously frustrating. People using all these acronyms and all the what's and the it's and not putting the who in the, do you know, understand what I mean? You understand maybe what you're talking about, but the person who has to listen or the, what this record is being held for does not understand. So if you could start over again, please. I, I don't mean to be a pain in the ass or a, or a disruptor. I just want to understand. I would have to get the letter to speak completely to it, but um, the local government commission has a list of indicators whenever we submit our audit to them, and this was one we got pinged for, and it's for a result of us charging a sewer capital fee that's not captured in that in indicator. So it makes it look like our revenues don't cover the expenses, but that's because they don't include that sewer capital fee in our revenues, but they include the debt service in the expenses, if that makes sense. So the capital fee covers the debt service, but it's not included in their indicator. So I guess I've got a question. Is this the first year that that's come up? Because that <coughs> capital charge has been there for decades. Yeah, well, they <laughs> Okay. And we got pink for it the first year. We barely squeezed by the second year, and then got pink for it again this year. And I told them um, when, it, when I was talking to the contact at the local government commission that this has been an ongoing thing. It's going to continue to be an 
ongoing thing. So can we get exempt from it? Mm. And they said, no, just keep a copy of this letter for now and send it in and again next year. OK. Because so. it's the quick ratio. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like they excluded capital items. and. We're treating this is a capital item, right? That's coming in, or my so we're treating it like it's re, it's revenue. I mean, it's, it's dollars coming in, but it's. I guess that's why I'm still kind of hung up. Should it be in there as a quick ratio, or is it a separate beast? Their quick ratio is operating revenue, and they're not calling capital charge. Capital Okay. It, it, just, it doesn't add up with the way we run our water. Okay. So, okay. But we can likely face this again this coming year. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, if I'm not mistaken, we're on agenda approval. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. And I, we jumped into the. Um, <laughs> no, no. We're, 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 we're done with the agenda approval. We're talking I mean, about minutes. the minutes. And we're talking about really yeah. this down well, at the bottom. Well, that was an issue. Yeah. So, is it an issue for the minutes? Do we need to change the minutes? Well, yeah. That's the question. Is, do the minutes need to be revised? Well, the, the question was never answered. That's the, the two issues were never clearly defined. But the minutes are correct. Yeah, the minutes are correct. The okay. minutes are correct. With, yeah, I guess. Okay. All right. All right. So, <coughs> is, yep. is this is this an is this an issue that the audit committee doesn't understand, and something you should assign a new committee chair to understand and explain to the audit committee and make sure that right. It sounds like you're still not comfortable, Mike. The issue's been resolved. That's correct, right. and the issue okay. was not addressed in the letter from the audit committee to. The commissioners. Okay. So, so I, I would suggest the way forward would be to assign the new audit committee chair right. to understand the situation and right. make sure that it's resolved to the satisfaction. Or even just get a breakdown of the expenditures, yeah. right? Well, needed, whatever needs the to letter, be needed. The, the, letter that they, the letter that they sent <coughs> kind of did that, but in a very complicated way, yeah, a very right. unclear yeah. way. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I, move, I move that we approve the um, minutes as drafted. Okay. A second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. Moving on then. Uh, public comments. Item four. We have one public member. <laughs> okay. No comments. Okay. Moving on then. Um, five. Election of a chair and a vice chair. Uh, what's, the, what's the proper way to say it? I nominate Tom Meyer to, to be the chair of the committee. But... It, it's in accordance with the instruction that the town has written. Is that a member uh, of the? I believe at one point the commissioner was supposed to be the chair, but that was changed, and the commissioner doesn't have to be the chair anymore. Okay, I didn't see that change, but I um, nominate you. It, it'd be in the ordinance, which we're going to talk about, I think, after this. Yeah, okay. it, that's correct. It used to be that way, but it's up to the committee now who you would like to choose the chair. <clears throat> Might support that nomination. Okay. A vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Then we need a vice chair. Anybody want to step forward? Awesome. I'm happy to serve. Uh, right? Mary, okay. Yeah, I'm happy. I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I live down the street. Right. I could have beat the guy on my bike. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I move that Mary is the vice chair. Okay. I'll second that. Thanks. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. Making progress. Okay. So. Item six, review of the audit committee ordinance. And I think this is very important. I want to make sure we all understand it because this has changed a little bit, but it basically is our charter, if you want to think of it that way, our charge, our responsibilities. So um, it, it defines our powers. It defines um, what it is we have to do. And um, we are an advisory board to the board of commissioners, advisory um, committee to the board of commissioners. Um, you, you, hopefully you've read all this. Number three, to me, is the real reason we're here today. Or one of the things on our plate is to recommend to the commissioners each year the selection of an independent external firm to conduct the annual external audit using request for proposal selection process when deemed necessary for the audit committee. So that, to me, was the reason I really wanted to get this meeting conducted prior to the Board of Commissioners voting on a contract so that we can actually provide the recommendations. So we will do that as an agenda topic. I wanted to highlight that. And then I also wanted to highlight that um, 
item eight that one of our charges to uh, confirm the audit report recommendations have been acted upon in advance uh, in advance of the commen commencement of the next internal audit. So that kind of got back to our previous topic. There's some things that were written that we need to make sure get resolved before we start on the next audit. So I don't know if, I, I assume you've read through these. Are there questions, understanding? I have a question, if you don't mind. So can someone tell me what, so I'm noticing like when we are sending these ordinances forward, we're not seeing what the changes were. Can someone, maybe staff, explain to me what the difference is in this proposed is this a proposed draft or no, is this No, this is it. This is existing oh, ordinance. this is our current one. This yeah. is our current so ordinance. no changes. That's correct. It's just mm -hmm. our, since we've got new members on the board, oh, and this perfect. has changed okay. since last time I was on the board, this is different. So I just wanted to set the baseline of this is what the ordinance is. These are our powers oh. and duties. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So we're okay. all yeah, great. Uh, on the so same changed. page with regards to what we need to do okay. and the reason we're meeting. Um, and I, I mean, I could I could talk a little bit. This was a red line change at some point in the previous. Yeah, but that's part of the whole ordinance setting process, sure. and and it's it's. Okay. I guess a little bit unique that this is an actual part of our ordinance versus a lot of other boards and committees are just appointed by the board. They're not in the ordinances. Yeah. Um, and I think in here, uh, maybe you can help me, Heather. There's a. Where it says that it doesn't have to be the commissioner doesn't no, no longer has to be the chair. Uh, I think it just says that you'll appoint a chair and It doesn't speak to that. Chair. Okay, they took that out. Yeah, okay. it's I under, think it's been a while since that's been in there. Yeah, okay. it's just um, yeah, I lost it just now too. <laughs> <laughs> e one. Okay. okay. Perfect. So, any questions? Everybody no. got a chance? It's pretty clear. Huh? Okay. Good. Okay, so then moving to seven, and like I said, this was kind of our responsibilities under three, which is to recommend selection of an independent external audit firm. So I will try to recap my understanding, and uh, Tony and Mike that were on the board, please correct me if I get something wrong. But last year, the town put out an RFP for audit services. Um, there were two firms that responded, Martin Stearns and Sharp Patel. Uh, the audit committee in February recommended Sharp Patel, uh, but it went before the board. Of, they had a little scoring sheet, I think it's in the minutes, um, of how they scored. It went before the board. The board overruled the audit committee recommendation and went with Martin Stearns. Um, it was a one-year, it's a three-year pricing, but it's a one-year contract. And, um, you know, I guess at this point, I, I, the timing's a little bit off. I was hoping we could meet on the 8th and we could go to the board on the, the, the uh, February meeting on the 20th. So uh, the, the real question here is whether we want to continue with Martin Stearns. The contract has not yet been signed. They've given us the price. Or do we want to try to get another bid and rethink this? And that's really the issue on the table for this meeting. And I was not here when the committee did this last year. So please, Mike and Tony, weigh in. Yeah, I, I think the intentions are when you do the multi-year contracts is, you know, yeah. assuming everything goes well, staff's happy, everybody, that, you know, you would not go to bid every year. Going to bid is, you know, very complicated in this market. I don't even think you've got enough time to go to bid right now, to be honest with you. So I think the intent is that when you do those, as soon as everything goes well, you just continue with it and then go out, that major bid cycle goes out every three years in that case. I think that's what we've done previously. Okay. Mike, did you have anything? I, I, I was uh, dead against set, dead set against this company auditing us again. Okay. I, 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 yeah, why? <laughs> well, I think they have their, their it's, it, it uh, First of all, the auditor doesn't answer questions uh, directly. Uh, it's it's once it's once every how often do they meet with us toward the end of the year? It, there's not there's not a, uh, a there's no interaction with the board and the auditor per se, and there's no interaction with this board 
which is an audit committee with the staff, okay? Which is, I guess, a diff different issue. But I think we're time for time for we're in time for a change. We need a change. It may be this year too late to go out and bid. I'm, I'm, I don't mean to be a distractor, but I mean to tell the way I feel is that I think this whole setup needs a different look and a harder look. Well, are the standards that you are seeking are they called for in the RFP for bid? Did we tell people we want you to meet X number of times per year? Are we setting uh, I, expectations I, that we expect them to complete or, or not? I don't know what we've told. Well, they, they're, it's, they're not in there from the audit committee on that selection. Those number, if they need to be in any kind of future RFP, I, I, what, then what's the purpose for us sitting, come meeting here? Well, I think it's articulated in what we just reviewed. Okay, I, I, maybe I think it needs to be a little more rigorous then. Okay. So that would really be a finance or budget committee yeah. responsibility rather than an audit committee responsibility. But I, I do have some questions if you don't mind. Um, so clearly. I mean, an RFP process would take a good 90 days minimum if you started right now, right? So thinking about that, when is the audit due in and what are the consequences of not having it on time? And I'm asking staff. It's due four months after fiscal year end, so that'd be October 31st. Okay. As of last year, the new consequences are they will withhold our sales tax just Okay. And never pay it? We get it. Once you submit. Once we submit. Okay. Yeah. In two years, if you haven't submitted after, I can't imagine okay. after two years. Right. Yeah. They don't withhold it forever. Yeah. Still. Yeah, okay. they can't. Yeah, I get it. No, I get it. <laughs> I think it was around yeah. 400,000. Right I'm not suggesting that. Yeah. 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 I'm be, just trying to understand yeah. what the penalty is. Yeah. Well, I think also we get on the watch list, right? If we you start get, a late audit, we're you, on the You get on the list. Yeah. We don't want to be on the list. Yeah. Right. You, you're on the radar <laughs> right. when that happens. Right. Borrowing money, money. Yeah. He, yeah. Here's, I'm sorry, I'm just new to the area. So my other question for you is, being quite familiar with audits at the local government level and state government level and nonprofit level, there are only a limited number of firms that do it and do it well, right? And so my question about that, is, and usually there are a limited number, there's an even further limited number of firms based on your annual budget, right? They don't want small timers because they can't make any money off of you. Um, so my question is, the firm here seems like this, this is probably their niche, right? They probably audit. Like 80%, 85% of North Carolina's. Right, they probably do all like little small local governments everywhere is what I'm guessing. And so they do have familiarity with that, and we are, seems like, to engage in an RFP process, although I am a fan of an RFP process. But I do think taking into account what is the experience and scope of the firm is important for us, and that's why I wanted to ask, this firm does this. You said 85%, basically. So they're probably doing all the beaches, I'm guessing. I, I um, have to look at their list. Yeah, it's a lot more. Yeah, so they're doing most of this and this is their area. Okay, I just want to make sure. And then the other question I had in looking at this that thank you, Heather, for sending us is, so we signed this contract last year, which is fine. Does the proposal become part of the contract? So they priced it for three years. Is there a penalty for not renewing with them? Okay. All right. Thank I think each year on. stands alone. Each year stands alone, I see. But yeah, an RFP process would take us forever and we wouldn't have a timely audit. And it, it sounded like they matched the price. I mean, I was trying to reconcile uh, unless it got to the programs because they, 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 they include bid. two program, major programs, and they added a third. So is this price the same as the price I, they I think gave it, us? I think it's actually $1,000 less. Yeah. Okay. I, I got hung up with that extra um, program yeah, thing. I, I, and just looking at it, I may not be reading it right, but the way that the pricing is, I think it's a thousand bucks less. And that, okay. that's the not to exceed price. Oh, okay. nice. We're right. more than likely not going to have three major programs. Uh, so if we only have two, major. the price will go down, or is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. They, they have to do the not to exceed because we have to budget the, the maximum amount because we can't. Yep. If, if we end up having more programs, then we have to be able to pay for it. 
So I'd like to, I'd like to better understand the relationship. It's it's been two years. They've they've audited the town two years now. Well, yeah. yeah, we typically do three year cycles, three right. years, right. Um, and then they it came back up. Now I I ran a list because I was curious. This will be their fifth year. Okay. So they did a three year cycle, and this will be the second out of okay. the second three year cycle. Okay. Um, and then after, before that was Rives and Associate for three years prior, and then Thompson Price had a run of six years, okay. and then Martin Stearns was back for four, that's as far as I track. So basically after this year, they will have done nine out of the 18 okay. prior audits. So okay. I, I do believe it's good to get a fresh set of eyes every now and then. It's healthy to change at yeah. some point. Yeah. Um, I would like to interject yeah. also, Mr. Chairman, that I, if I'm not mistaken, before we contracted with Martin Starnes, we were actually on the list of late audits oh, for at least two years. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, so part that. of what we <laughs> were dealing with when doing the RFP and, and trying to formalize the process was getting on track, which it appears that we've been on track That's for great. those four years. They've all been... Yeah, and, I, and I'll, 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 I'll add, because I was, I was trying to, you know, I went through the minutes. It was in the March minutes where they actually had the debate, the discussion. I think the concern was that uh, Patel was in litigation with Rives. They were a spinoff from Rives, and there was, there was a, litigation. There was a, a, a substantial price difference as well on the audits. I think that that was part of the discussion. So, so. The, the, the the other one was lower price. Is that yeah. right? And that was a concern. <laughs> no, I uh, I didn't vote for that, but the committee voted for that other. Okay. The commissioners who made the decision to go in Martin Stern. So this committee, the audit committee, did vote for the less expensive provider. Right. And I, my understanding was that the, the tool that scored them weighted price pretty heavily, so that added up to the score. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I pulled the minutes from the March meeting, um, and uh, it was Mayor Pro Tem Smith uh, said with them being in litigation and having to pay a percent of their profits yeah. and still coming in with a lower price caused him concern. So it seemed to be the potential litigation mm. um, with the firm they spun off from. So. Yeah. So also, depending on where we're submitting, if I may, depending on where we're submitting these audits, I mean, the caliber of the firm and the fact that they do other local governments would be rather important, I would guess. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at the auditor over here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Right? Uh, quality of audit's important. Right. Um, they, they do these audits remotely for the most part. They, every year that I've been here, there's been more and more people working remote and more and more people working here. So their mm. firm's grown. Yeah. Um, last year we had three people here doing field work and I think another four or five. <clears throat> They've, so they yeah. were remote during the pandemic, and then, or? Well, no, they, they've always been both. They've always done field work and remote work. Like, they've got two teams working. Well, they're all one team, but they've got yeah. three or four people that come here, and then three or four people, I guess, in Hickory working on it. Okay. So I've, I've heard a couple of people express in various ways that maybe one reason for going out for proposals is maybe the auditors are too close. Um, Maybe or what I, I did. The auditors are too close, too close, if you will, or Mike had expressed a concern about them not answering questions or something along those lines. That goes to the issue of independence and the independence of the auditors. And I will say this when I listened to the Board of Commissioners meeting the last time, the last meeting, I'm delighted that you held off on the um, appointing the auditors because it would raise an independence concern, I think, if you would have appointed the auditors, maybe. And the first topic we'd have to talk about is whether we need to go to the LGC with an independence concern. That's ugly. That's awful. Nobody, nobody would want to do that. So I'm glad you guys. I'm well, who's made that allegation? Who's made an allegation of an independence uh, concern? Well, I've just heard comments around here that, that talk about an independence concern. And I, I've heard people say maybe. I'm not, I'm not, I mean, that's a serious allegation. Who, I know. Is this about, well, one about reason, the firm, or what, what are we talking about here? One reason that we would, we would go out for proposals is because management's too close. To, to, the, to the auditors. And their allegations. And that's, that's an independence, that, that becomes an independence concern. I, I know what it is, but are there allegations of that? No, I'm just saying that, I'm just saying that mm -hmm. you need to be concerned, you need to be concerned about independence in fact and in appearance. And Are there appearances <clears throat> of that? No, but I'm saying there could be. 
I'm saying there could be. So I'm glad. I'm glad that it was held off. I also say, I would also say that if it's not necessary to change, we shouldn't change. Um, you're driving a lot of change already. Change is hard for management in terms of changing auditors. Um, that's a lot of, that's a lot of, and it's hard for auditors as well. Well, but it could be a red flag also. It could be, and yeah. then you get into some things. So I would say that if not Hopefully. necessary to change, we shouldn't change. Um, consider next year whether we should change. Um, but um, for this year, I would be comfortable with staying with Martins and, the Martins and Stearns. Is that, some, is that the name of the... Martin Stearns, the associates, yeah. yeah. I, I would uh, second that, and, and if we can just approve this one, and why don't we set aside some work time that we can look at what bidding out next year sure. would look like and, sure. and look at the RFP process, see if it's inclusive, if it includes all the pieces you want relative to their communication back or independence, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Let's do that objectively and, and have time, if we ought to, to bid next year. Yeah. I think the pricing's right. Um, yeah. I think in terms of quality right. of audit, you're probably getting a very high quality audit, giving these people, you know, you, you take Joe, um, you know, public out there running a CPA firm, you'll get an audit, you'll get an opinion, LGC will probably approve it, but the quality of that audit is different yeah. mm -hmm. than the quality of audit you're going to get from, from a firm like this. So, I um, I would move that we stay with the current firm for this year. I, I think to recommend it to the board. To recommend it to the board, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Second. There's a second. Okay. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> oh, more. Look at. I have not read this complete contract for audit, okay? My, my experience is in federal audits, okay? In, in the military and with the federal government, okay? And what I saw, I've seen for the past two years, it says, recommend, uh, <clears throat> monitor the performance of the commercial public auditing firms providing audit services to the town. That's our responsibility, monitor the performance of commercial public auditing firms. I've sat here for two years, I've never seen that happen, unless it happened when my eyes were closed. Mm -hmm. Is it in this contract? I mean, if we're gonna say we're gonna do something, we're telling the taxpayer we're going to do this. Right. Is it in the contract? I, I think this uh, town manager wrote it, right? No, oh, town manager, the, the local government commission. That's that's okay. a direct does, product of Sharon Edmondson. Well, okay. Well, does Sharon Edmondson put in here that we're this is our responsibility to? to well, there's to me there's two things. One is the contract with the auditor. And the other one is our responsibility as an audit committee, and that's in the ordinance. But we start rolling in on the contractor saying, hey, we're going to do X, Y, and Z in accordance with paragraph Bravo, subparagraph 4, whatever it is. Well, and they say, well, wait a minute. That's not in the contract. Well, um, we, we <laughs> they, I'm sure their contracts, they need to report status. They need to report where they're at. They need to report progress. Hey, if I may. Yes. Martin Stern, they have 125 governmental clients. And as our finance person just told us on staff, they are doing 85% of the cities, counties, and towns in North Carolina. So I think our due diligence here is probably not a problem. Uh, yeah, I, I... Okay, then let's strike, let's strike this. What, or, okay. Are we going to do it or aren't we going to do it? We well, we're, we're still debating. We, we have, we'll take another vote here. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. The, the, I absolutely agree that as a committee, as an audit committee, and I'm looking at our powers and duties, we have responsibilities I'm, I'm like be, that. I'm not being a disruptor. I'm just saying this is what And it it's up to <laughs> us to do our job in terms of monitoring the performance and keeping them on their toes. And I think as, as Tony said, I, I you know, this is the new board. We can get more engaged than the previous ones if we want to get more engaged. Done. It's our responsibility to do so. I totally agree. Um, you know, I mean, you know, audit committees in the corporate world are very, very powerful. They've been put in place so that if there is any corruption in the high levels, there's an alternate path. You don't have to report up through management. So, you know, we haven't been kind of playing that role. It is a role that is in my mind, expected of an audit committee, and... Well, and oftentimes that's carried out by the chair. <clears throat> those, those duties are oftentimes carried out by the chair. The chair will have a relationship with the, with the um, engagement partner or the quality reviewing partner, and most, most of those discussions will be carried out by the chair, and the chair brings it back to the committee at that time during, during the committee meetings. Right. 
So yeah, so I think the challenge is the challenge is yours. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. And Mary's too. But I'll help. I'll help. Anyway. I support you 100. Okay. <laughs> well, I do think. I mean, David, we're going to want to meet with them, and we're going to want to be more involved than the prior committees have been um, with regards to the audit as it proceeds. And and um, I, I, I see that as our responsibility. I think um, you know it's on, it's on us to do that. Yeah, I think we ought to have a discussion about scope and risk areas and all those you know all those audit. Issues that an audit committee would typically discuss with the with an auditor. Yeah. No. And I. <coughs> I mean, I would very much like to be able to map our financial reports, and I've, I've talked to Daniel and David about this. You know, we got all these accounts, line items. It's like, how do these show up in the audit? Because the audit is what's used to generate the LGC dashboard yeah. of things. But so if they're it's, not material, they're not going to audit them, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. but still, for us, it's, I'm, I'm thinking of structural, just right. how does this roll up? Because when you get to the audit, they got some really high level, sure. they combine B part and general fund, and they just, you know, yeah, police or whatever. Right. And you get into our system, and, you it's know, the, maybe police is different, but we've got charges going between B part. So, do they know. do a kickoff for us once you contract with them? Do we have a kickoff where they tell us what they're going to do and their timeline? Or they just do, do that with you guys? We've, we've had in briefs by the auditor before. It, it's going to depend on what your, what your expectation is, what your desire and appetite for interface is. I don't I want mean, to meet I, with them forever and ever, I'm in, but maybe a kickoff to let us know what they're going to do and the timeline in which they're going to do it. Because if we keep meeting with them, it's going to slow, the, right. slow his work down. No, so that's normally, yeah. Go ahead. A, a kickoff meeting with a schedule. That's, Perfect. you know, what we would look yeah. at doing. Okay. I think it'd be good just to make the connection and, yeah. you know, set yeah. the communication protocols in terms of, right. you know, yeah. if we had a question or they had a question, how would we talk to each other? Well, we should talk through the staff, right? Um, that's a debate. That's not a debate. <laughs> um, that's a financial control issue. We should not, as volunteers, be asking the auditors questions unless we're in this forum, period at all or else we will incur liability well, and I'm chair, not willing to do that oh I got security clearance of course the chair should carry, <laughs> the chair should carry on the conversations those conversations when you're talking about you're talking about offline conversations yeah. with auditors yeah but I think staff should be involved in all of that discussion in addition um, for yeah. our own protection they wouldn't in a corporate environment but but a corporate environment is different I, I don't think I, 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 don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think all the government well, I, think, I think we need to have some education on the difference between yeah, let me, for public and, yeah let me and, help and a private, um, uh, yeah let me committee. assist I, I currently work in a corporate environment but I spent 18 years in government and I've run nonprofits and for our own protections as volunteers which we are a voluntary group appointed by the Commission I mean the the, the group the council if we are not including staff in the conversations and we are providing direction to an auditor, we will then be liable for anything that they do. And I will tell you as a citizen, I'm not willing to assume that liability even though I'm sure the town is self-insured. So if there are discussions with a firm under contract with a local government by a volunteer or even an elected official, staff should be present to make sure that we're compliant with everything. Um, we could get ourselves in trouble by having behind the bin conversations um, with somebody that's contracted to the town. They should be talking to the employees of the town. And again, it doesn't mean we can't give direction, advice, ask for things, request information. That's our job, right? Our job is to make sure that this is all happening in compliance with all of the rules and to provide oversight. That's our job and yay for us. But also, I'm not willing to place myself in a position of liability by not involving staff in conversations with a contracted provider. I, I just- yeah, So it sounds like, I mean, if we can <laughs> get involved with a kickoff and then we can resolve- Public, yeah. If they have their schedule and this is where their key milestones are, yeah. maybe we can set some, okay, we're gonna meet and-, and Yeah, if we need or, to meet. Or piggyback on a planned meeting. Right. Right, exactly. If we need to talk to them, though, it should be in a public forum or at least with a staff person present so that we all have our bases covered. And my, that's my, that's not just my opinion, that's just 
how we should operate and how most local governments operate. And so, um, I mean, I spend a lot of time helping local governments be compliant with all of their federal grant rules. In fact, that's almost one of my whole jobs. So I'm not trying to get us out of compliance. No, I, I might concern, <laughs> you know, two CFR, having, right? That's right. <laughs> I like Maybe compliance. Wait, having been on the corporate world, <laughs> yeah. it's like if the auditor finds something bad. Yeah, they, they tell a the director, to, but the director has, under the corporate structure, I'm a, I, I'm a senior director in a corporate office now, different. In a corporate structure, I have that responsibility over my own project, right? So that's, it's different. The rules are different for an, a corporate board or corporation than they are for a local government. Anything we do with respect to local government, the contract is not with us as volunteers or even with the town um, committee. The, the contract is with the town and the fiduciaries of the town, who was the town manager and our finance director, right? I thought it was the board of commissioners. No, you're voting and instructing them to do a thing, but they own the thing, right? Well, it would seem to me if let's just say. I that mean, if we need an attorney to talk about this, we should get one. But <laughs> right, let's, just, let's just say that an auditor run, runs across an issue and says, "Wow, well, Mary might know something about." Well, it's not appropriate, really, for the auditor to contact Mary and ask Absolutely. Mary about it. Yeah. <clears throat> right. But they should come through the staff. If they did, and you provided a document, I suppose you're responsible for that document in some sort of way because it wasn't provided by the town. You're, you're right. responsible. That would be probably with any any sort of a situation. I get that's just normal legal liability. I don't know. I mean, y'all are talking about corporate. I just had an OIG. <clears throat> I just had an Office of the Inspector General. I'm sorry, I don't want to use the acronyms. Uh, Office of the Inspector General audit as a corporation, and I never had a meeting without our lawyer, our finance director. <laughs> I mean, I, we, you just don't do that. We shouldn't be having offline conversations with contractors, period. Well, the, the, the chair will. I mean, the, the chair will have I'd, regular yeah, conversations but, with. But they should also That's involve the staff. Yeah, I would, I, I would say an auditor needs to have, be able to have a private conversation. Only with the if the there's malfeasance. My only position was when I mentioned this at the beginning five minutes ago was if we're going to put it in an instruction yeah. that says we're going to do it, we're going to do it. Yeah. If not, then take it out. If we're going to have meetings where the chairman can meet and we have to follow all these legal rules, yeah, legal rules well, are important. To put it in the instruction <laughs> and make reference to that. Okay, that I'm is, just saying do, if we're going to say we're going to do it, then do it. If not, right. let's change it. Well, it's all the ordinance is the ordinance, and we, you know, we're going to do what the ordinance says, or we're going to have to revise the ordinance. Right. Right. Now, that's not our, it's not our ordinance. It's, to revise. it's not in the ordinance. I mean, this is kind of a rules procedure kind of thing that we. It's not our ordinance to revise. Yeah, right. We got to go right. Right. Yeah, right. But if we Correct. want to come up with our our rules of engagement procedure, whatever we want exactly. to call them, we can do that. And I think. Yeah. Tony, you said this would maybe be a good year to think them through. I think Correct. you would make your recommendations for what you might want to. We just can't unilaterally go and change an ordinance. This is volunteer <laughs> board up here. Right. Right. Just right. A, right. a bunch of citizens here. Right. right. The commission ultimately makes that decision. It's their ordinance. They're the ones that would have to implement that. We can't change that just yep. because we want to do it. Do we have a suggestion for change? I don't have one. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't have one. one I would recommend yeah. that you all read this instruction thoroughly. And if you have any problems with it, something you can't do or something we should do. Well, it's all your definition of monitored performance. If you don't think monitored performance is meeting your standard of modern performance and it, it meets mine, we can just disagree on that. Doesn't mean well, we have wrong. to have a meeting to come to, come to grips with that. I'm, I'm I mean, when you that. monitor performance, are we going to do it with our, head our, our heads turned? Uh, no, and I don't want to be alleged of that. And I'm not doing it with my head turning. I take it serious, I do that. I hope that you would in every person How do you up monitor here? the town's performance or the auditor's Well, this is the monitoring the auditor's performance. How do you monitor the auditor's performance? Well, well, <coughs> once well, a year when I, you get the report? Well, I, yes. I, I, think I, would, I would suggest a way you could monitor the auditor's performance. That is meet at the beginning of the, right, of the off, audit. Which we've said. Kick off meeting, yeah. talk about the areas of risk, what and they're going sure to. And make sure they meet their scope. Scope and risk. Audit partner mm -hmm. ought to be in contact with the committee chair throughout the audit. And at the end of the audit, they present the results of the audit, and the audit committee makes its recommendation to the board to approve the audit. As long as somebody on the audit committee, <coughs> a chair, whomever, 
That's fine. Yeah. But we do what we say we're going to do. Right. 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 And you're right, Tony. Uh, my diff my <coughs> mind is a little different than yours. Yeah, well, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. <coughs> so I believe, Heather, help us out. We've got an, uh, a motion and a second on the floor. Is that? That's great. Can you reread it for us all, please? <laughs> I think I have to stay with the current firm for this year to recommend that to the board. Okay. And there was a second? Okay. Yeah. Yep. I assume we've had our discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Are we going to add the piece about exploring next year or just the, uh, No, this is to, with, well, okay. it'll be a separate motion. I think we should. Okay, just make um, for this just, year. Okay. Because uh, they're going to read, the auditors are going to read the, they're going to read the minutes of the audit committee meeting, so <laughs> I, I would rather keep okay. that out of the, right. the motion. Okay. Okay. So all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? Okay, unanimous. Um, yeah, I guess while we're still on it, because this has to do with action regarding the audit, um, we can um, set a meeting, you know, put that on the agenda for the next meeting, or do you want another motion, Tony, or how do you want to, um, because I, I agree, I think that's a great idea to, to use this cycle as one to figure out kind of our Call them rules, call them rules procedure, whatever you want to call them. I'm, Go ahead, David. I'm not following yet. I, well, I just <coughs> wanted, Tony brought up a point that we didn't put on the motion we just passed, whether or not we want another motion to address it. Um, it uh, well, I think a couple things have come up today that perhaps we can schedule out over the year as we're monitoring the audit process. One of those is right. with a new board member, you know, a review of the scope and services, see if, if they need to be tweaked. We should do that periodically. Probably hasn't been done in a number of years. Maybe we could do that at one of our meetings. And this other one that we talked about was if we, I think to be fair to an auditor, if we're going to hold them to certain performance standards, uh, we should be clear on that and it be articulated. And if that means ultimately we decide we want to see them more often, wonderful. As long as they know that and they have the opportunity to perform against it, then I think we have an obligation right. in that oversight of the audit firm to be clear of what those expectations are before the audit. Mm -hmm. So maybe that would be one of our meetings as well. We could kind of hash that out and then in next year's audit, the auditor, whoever that might be, would say, okay, these are the expectations. This is how I'm going to work in the Holden Beach. Okay. Is I'm going to work with the audit committee or the chairman or the it's just okay. we need to put that to paper to be fair to everybody and set expectations. <coughs> and I, and I, I'm hoping if we can, you know, participate in a kickoff, we'll get a feel for their, yeah. what they plan to do, and we can pick some points where it would be good for us to get engaged or at least sit in or, you know. We don't want to add work to them, but if we can piggyback on something they're doing and, right. and come up to speed. Right. I'll give you just another example in defense of being able to maybe review the responsibility, as, as Mark mentioned. The one that I've kind of always had a little bit of an issue is, that, and, and we've committed to doing it, is this, the review of the town's internal controls. And it's mm. a big, important mm. issue. It goes mm. hand in glove with the audit. Mm. Yes. Hard to do that, hard to know exactly what it means. Mm -hmm. I think probably we're to have some discussion about that uh, as idea. part of our review, yeah. as part of what we do here. We, we can do that, and I've actually got a history of that. Um, back when I was on the audit committee prior, um, for a series of years, multiple years, we had significant internal control issues raised in the audit and flagged in the audit. So the audit committee hired a, another firm <coughs> to do an internal controls review and highlighted all the weaknesses and the causes for them. And then that went to the town. The town's been working on them or started working on them and now we've been getting clean audits. So in the yeah. internal control reviews, we're not getting. But we did have, I don't okay. know, five, six, seven years in a row that had significant deficiencies. Mm -hmm. So, um, David, I don't know if you want to add to that or not. But I haven't, they haven't shown up in any audits. The, since. the only uh, thing I'd add is that the Board of Commissioners commissioned that internal control study, not the audit committee. That's correct. The audit committee recommended it to the board, and the board accepted it and commissioned it. And the audit committee... Yeah. It was RSM out of Wilmington that did it. So, does the town does the town have a directive that outlines internal controls, audit controls? Other well, other than the uniform guidance and generally accepting the county the accounting answer, principles. The, question, the answer is no, they don't, right? 
They do or they don't. They just have to follow the uniform guidance. They don't have to have one. No one has okay. to have one. You follow the uniform guidance. Yeah. I mean, that report, um, I think, I don't know, Heather, it's probably not on the internet anymore or on the website or anything, but it's it's available. Um, the report on the internal control. The internal control. That might probably be a good one for that to well, Yeah. And then say the work that's been done since yeah. then. Yeah, that'd be yeah. interesting. Yeah. Okay. okay. It's on the web? No. no. It's old. Hey, Tom, it's just, pretty dated, I, I think, maybe. I just want to be clear. We're, we're asking the auditors to meet with us for an opening meeting and a closing meeting. Right? Well, uh, my understanding is they're going to have a kickoff meeting. They typically do. And then yeah. we would be asking to okay. be able to participate or, uh, you know, be involved in it. And, and then they should have a closing meeting as well. Yes. And right. the audit committee the results of the, of the audit. Correct. Right. Okay. So I just want to make sure that we're, that we're clear with the auditors that that's, we're, we're asking them to do that. Is it dated a week before they present the board? Okay. 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 Good. Good. Perfect. Thank you. And so that's standard. That's standard procedure. And, and based based on last year, when does the kickoff typically occur? I mean, when do they start their work? The sooner the better. Yeah. Okay. It's yeah. uh. I mean. I feel like we're late. April. When they start in May. Yeah, we were they doing. Yeah, we got to prepare by client list. Did and they have started a kickoff working meeting? on it? Yeah, they did, and that was in April. It was early. It was early. Okay. Okay. Well, okay. we wouldn't want to hold anything up. So let me ask a question of this group. Instead of having a, not to avoid anything, but instead of having a public meeting, if the staff are going to hold a kickoff, can you just? invite members of the committee to the kickoff is that a bad thing or would you rather have it in this forum that we have currently i just don't want to hold up any party process because some of us aren't available i'm i'm leery about compliance with public uh, open okay. meeting laws and so, so okay if, gotcha. if there's any doubt let's just have a meeting. meeting okay perfect thank yeah. you Wait, what was you what was the answer then hold a public meeting it's the answer so they will so, hold their kickoff meeting with us in a public forum, is that it? Correct. Yeah, just, just like this. Okay. So yeah. what about a midterm? They don't, they don't do don't that. They don't. And if There's we didn't put it... We've we, we just been handling that with staff reports and giving a status on about where we're at. Once again, that, during the audit, it's typically the interaction with the audit chair a regular interaction with the audit chair. This is what we're doing. This is what we're finding. Things are yeah, okay. Sure. Well, and, and, and chair and co-chair would be two. That sure. wouldn't be a, our quorum is three, right? Yeah, so right. two of us could meet with them without triggering a public meeting. Sure. Well, okay. let's ask yeah. the clerk about public about compliance with public meetings because if you have an elected or you have an appointed board member that's conducting official business, then right. it becomes. It, 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 that's oh, where wow. you're it, that's a that's it, that's a. If the committee is appointing, even if you're appointing just or one person, but the committee itself is appointing that person. Right. That's an official committee. Correct. It's a subcommittee of the committee. That's okay. Just, I don't. It's better just to go ahead. And Have a meeting. Can, can we can we revisit the chair? So you're gonna you're gonna be talking with these auditors regularly. Yeah. Conducting public. Business. That's the rub. It's a problem. That's All the right. problem. <laughs> so so I'm questioning whether or not you should be the chair because we're just we just. It, ruin it, that we you can't have that relationship well, with the auditors it, that you it need would, to have. It, yeah, it would work even, it, even, regardless of who it is. It doesn't matter who the chair is. Because we're a public body as well. Mm. It doesn't matter who the chair is. Wow. And that's why I suggested that if there are any discussions with audit that also staff meeting. should be involved uh. so that it it everything's on the up and up and staff are there and it's a staff meeting and they may have asked somebody to sit in but one person is limited i mean you can't if everybody's piling in you can't you got to have a public meeting and we're going to slow down their work and i'll be honest this, well, yeah, we're I'm, small potatoes for these people i'm sure this isn't you know and, I mean, just holding up a process i mean this committee's been in <laughs> place and it's had actually commissioner as a chair for Many yeah, years. I mean, worked. did we just not meet, or you know, how did no. we address this in the past? They probably just work with staff. <coughs> okay. Without but, yeah, interference. Like, if, audit, <laughs> like, if you have question, a question, 
the, that's different than appointing an actual person that needs to actually work with it. It's basically when you get into the committees of appointing somebody, then you're getting a, a subcommittee of the committee. Okay. If there's like a standing meeting, if there's... It's, it's like if we yeah. asked a question and said, can you ask the auditors, we asked our finance chair here, can you, director, can you ask the auditors this question and we funneled it through him, that's legit. We can do that all day long. It's another thing for us to ask to meet with them. So, 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 so Heather, what if, what if the audit partner calls Tom and says, hey, Tom, I ran across this issue. Um, and we booked something wrong. Um, and it seems a little suspect to me. What do you know about this? So Tom shouldn't be answering no, for the Heather, town. Heather, Heather, I, I want, I want <laughs> I'm going to have to honestly read the contract because the audit committee works for the board as far as I'm understanding. Right. So mm -hmm. they would contact the board of commissioners as the a whole. whole. Board. So uh, off of my understanding, they reported at a meeting. If, if, if they mm -hmm. come up with an issue, yeah. they're contacting the board of commissioners, right. not the audit committee. Interesting. 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 Is that isn't that how it's written in there? Yeah. I mean, any, yeah. any findings that they would have would be reported in the board. audit report. Right. Yeah, well, that, that goes to the question of yeah. that goes the to the question of how do you monitor yeah. something you can't monitor? You know, and and if, the you staff's, a, like and if the staff's not doing their job, yeah. they're going to go to the board of commissioners and say we're not getting these documents from the, the yeah. staff. Or yeah, yeah. No, I just, right. I, yeah, right. that, I'm not concerned about the performance of the audit. I'm concerned about issues that come up in the audit and how that auditor has the freedom to discuss the things mm -hmm. the auditor needs to discuss to get the information the auditor needs to get to opine on an issue. I think if it rises to a level that it's above staff, then at that point we'd be calling a meeting anyways because it, it, it's, it's all with public. Everything's supposed to be discussed. Okay. In, you know, okay. that's the whole purpose okay. of the open meeting law is so that the public Got has it. the opportunity to participate in anything. Okay. So, yeah, if it's rising to that occasion, I think it would actually probably be best to do it in a public forum and okay. discuss okay. it. Yeah. So does the town plan to have open meeting training I, I it seems like i went through it years and years ago they had all the committees and boards take it is that something we're not doing they can um we've done it uh, over my billion years we've done it different ways we've done it where the attorney will come in and give a little open meeting presentation we've done it where we've hired the school of government that would do a mm. presentation i mean we, we could okay i mean we, it just seems like we've got a lot of boards that have new members that have not been in the open meeting world, mm -hmm. it might be good. Mm -hmm. I, I did the one when the attorney, Noel did it, or Noel Fox did it. Yeah. Um, Basically what it comes down to, the summation of it is nothing that you guys do is private. Right. You guys talk to each other on email, that's public. You talk to each other on text, that's public. public. Anything you do is subject to a public record request. And anything that, any business that's being conducted has to be in an open forum. You can't, like, I couldn't send an email to the whole audit committee and expect you guys to discuss it in the background. That's a big no-no, too. There's no mm -hmm. no discussing at all unless we're sitting at this, mm -hmm. this desk right here is what Correct. <laughs> the, mm -hmm. the main thing is. Got it. Right. I think it'd be good to do the training. Maybe yeah. we'll see how June, because June we staff up new boards. Is that? It, July. 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 Okay. You've got to let okay. me through the budget because you're killing me. All the meetings we have, but we could definitely look at something else. Okay, okay. I, I thought it was very helpful because it is eye opening. You don't realize the, the reach and, and of I'm the sure request. And I'm sure David and I, honestly, if Cindy isn't comfortable with it, I'm sure David and I can handle it. We've been through it a thousand times. Are they, do they, so. they offer that online now? Just kind of that kind of generic the local uh, government commission? Can't you just go? They, they've got an ethics online, I know. Yeah. Um, public, I don't know I don't about the open they meeting. They it seems like they public should. Not I mean. areas that. It's not brain I probably have the attorney's old uh, presentation. I can look through and see mm. if I can find well, that. I'd be just, happy to share that with you what, guys. What, what you're not going to get from the canned, mm. unless it's a recorded uh, interactive, yeah. is you're not going to get the... the um, the dot the ability to ask the question about well what if right. I what oh, about yeah. this yeah. and that's right. that's the dust bunnies in the corner on open meetings yeah. rules. Right. If, yeah. if I'm your if I'm the person answering your questions, I'm the one I probably always lean towards the strict side. When it's gray I prefer to go with the strict side mm -hmm. than yeah. <laughs> violating anything. Mm -hmm. Right. 
So we've got plenty to talk about. It yeah, like we, we do, to which is a good lead into eight, topic eight, which is meeting schedule. I have um, one more question about the audit. Sure. <coughs> Did on, on, on sub, uh, in your audit report, uh, guidance, it says, uh, receive confirmation that audit report recommendations have been acted upon in advance of the commencement of the next external audit, okay? Based on your last year's report, the audit report, there was a requirement to report to the LGC about the sewer and water thing, okay? Did the auditor make any other recommendations to the town that needed correction or what about the year before? I mean, it's clean online. audits. It's online. There's no. There's no. There's clean audits. It's a, the findings. There were no findings. No that's findings. what that address right. is. That's what the I findings. find strange. Okay, so there are no findings this year. No. There are no findings last year. No findings the year before. That's a good mm -hmm. thing. All right. All right. Well, well, this this topic we discussed <coughs> with the quick ratio was a recommend. I mean, that was a requirement, right? To write the yeah, head to write a letter to LGC. Okay. Yeah, that wasn't an auditor recommendation. That was okay. Yeah, right. So the audit, right. So because typically the recommendations are in the back of the report. I mean, I've seen them mostly under the internal control. I haven't seen any yet. Two okay. years. So I just wondered how. It's. It's not. It's very unusual. Because there's no so. findings. It's not unusual. I've had no findings. My business. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. So. Item 8, meeting schedule, we're supposed to meet quarterly plus one, I think. Audit committee shall meet quarterly in the addition of at least one time per year to review the final audit results with the external firm. So that'll be when they're ready to present to us, which would be prior to us making a recommendation to the Board of Commissioners. So um, quarterly would be three months from now. We're probably into the kickoff time, aren't we, at that point, if it's March, sure. April, May? So we will let them pick that date what's um, the best way if we want to sync up on a kickoff probably to see their availability and then see if that lines up with right y'all's availability sure okay or and we've, we've discussed having you know meetings to talk about our rules or whatever else i don't know if we want to uh, i don't know how meeting heavy you guys want to be to be <laughs> no, I'll piggyback the first one, like you said, piggyback the first okay. one on the audit kickoff meeting. Okay. And then we can have a good discussion around that after we attend the audit kickoff meeting. We have a good discussion around how the audit kickoff meeting went and what we thought of that, and then we can talk about whether we want to, you know. Yeah, and I, and I think, I'm hoping coming off the kickoff, they would tell us, you know, <laughs> we, we plan to have, you know, these milestones in our audit, and we might want to meet around their milestones just to monitor how they're doing. Um, I mean, typically, Daniel, what was it last year? It, you, you've got a kickoff, then there's, I mean, then you got the final, so you kind of book in the start and the stop. In the middle, were there some points where audit committee? Um, I, don't, I don't think there's any audit committee engagement mm -hmm. in play. Okay. There hasn't been, okay. Okay, so we may want to, so I'm, I'm just thinking out loud here. So if we have their kickoff in the, uh, or, or February, March, April, April time frame, May time frame, July, August maybe we would have, and then September, October is their finals in due end of October. So we'd be looking, we'd be looking at kickoff in the April time frame and the, the audit presentation in the October time frame. So that, and then maybe we pick one in between that we can, yeah, I, I would say that you might want to schedule that, that there's nothing unusual or there's nothing to discuss that the auditors don't. And we could pick, we just have an audit committee meeting and the auditors wouldn't need to attend. If things are just going, yep. they're bouncing along. There's yeah. no reason, real reason to meet with the, for the auditors to meet with the audit committee. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I would assume they charge for that every time they mm -hmm. do it. So They'll be okay. built into the charge next year if we did it. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, so... <laughs> So the, this contract is going to have to go back to the board for approval. Um, so that would most likely be on the March meeting. 
and then I'm sure that's when Daniel would actually start really engaging with the auditor. So if you want, once that happens, he could ask for a few dates. I could send them to you guys, and you could send your availability back to me to see what we can mesh up if you want to work it that way. That's, I think that'd be best because then we're coordinating among all the parties. Okay. And then we'll just kind of plan for audit committee only somewhere in the middle of that, and then the, in October, whenever they're ready, we have the final one. Okay. That's pretty good cadence. Okay. Um, it would make sense that our meetings are scheduled around the audit. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we don't want to impose on them if we right. can. Okay. Um, anything else with regards to meetings? All right. We're down to adjourn. Anybody make a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. Okay. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank We're you, adjourned. Everyone. Thank you. Thank you.